I had a chance to work for the uh, Cleveland Call and Post in the summer of 1965. I was just a kid, uh, home uh, from, from school, home for the summer, and uh, my editor of the Call and Post newspaper, where I was an intern, came up to me, not even adult age yet, I had not yet reached adult age, and he came up to me and he says, Leon, Martin Luther King is coming into town. I says, I heard that. He says, uh, you think you could handle the story of covering him coming in? I had been with the paper for some weeks and I'd showed that I was able to be trusted alone even as an intern to go cover a story and do fairly well with it. Al Sweeney asked me to go cover Martin Luther King at East 40th Street and what is now called Community College Drive, not far from where we stand right now. There is a shopping area there, a little strip mall, an L-shaped strip mall right at, at that intersection. And Dr. King and Ralph Abernathy, one of his lieutenants, and several others, Fred Shuttlesworth, were to come and speak to the crowd. Well, when I got there, I got there late. And the crowd had already gathered. And Dr. King was to speak from a flatbed truck right up against that little strip mall. And I was out at the street having parked my father's car I didn't own a car, and the call and post did not supply cars for its reporters, and I'd borrowed my father's car to go cover the great man, Martin Luther King. When I got there, I couldn't get through the crowd up to where he was going to speak. The place had been set up, but he was not yet on the platform. When I got there, I says, I got to get through the crowd. So I went through the crowd, and people pushed me back. And they said, you can't get up here. We've been here all day, and now you want to walk to the front? We, we're trying to get to the front, too. you got to stay back here. It's first come, first serve, said somebody. But I said, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm dead in the water. I've got a camera, and I've got to get good pictures of Martin Luther King. And then it dawned on me. I'm with the call and post. I'm from the news media. And I says, I'm from the news media. And they said, why didn't you say that? Let this man through. <laughs> yeah, okay. I've been using that line all these years. <laughs> so I was able to get to the front. Dr. King eventually came out. And I was right there at that flatbed truck where they had microphones to set up. And as Dr. King walked in, right by the steps, there I was. I kind of said, hi, Dr. King. Hi, Dr. King. First time. I mean, I'd never seen him. Seen him on television. Seen him in newspapers. All my images of Dr. King were in black and white and shades of gray, like looking at a black and white television or looking at newspaper pictures. Very few color photographs I saw in Life magazine, maybe here and there. But now he walked in. It was all in color. I could see his skin. I could see where, where his mustache was cut, how he had shaved that day. I remember he had on a red tie, a thin red tie, and a white shirt, and a black suit. I could see him. I could see his height. I could see all of that. And I says, hi, Dr. King. <laughs> and he just kind of waved to me and kind of waved back and smiled. And I drank that, that in as I'm taking his picture. I drank it in, and I took his picture, took his picture, took his picture. And one of those pictures made the front page of the Call and Post that week. And I still have that newspaper at home. Photographs by Leon D. Bibb <laughs> down at the bottom. But Dr. King is in here. The one time I saw him, the one time I saw him face to face, although I've seen, since seen, of course, he was killed in 1968. But I've met his wife and been with Coretta, been with one of his sons even been with the man who killed him. In 1978, I interviewed James Earl Ray, Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary in Tennessee, the only local television news reporter to have an interview with the assassin of Martin Luther King in prison. 